Good morning. Happy Thursday. I was asked to audit, audit the audits, audit of Blind Justice's audit of a WIC clinic in North Carolina. Blind Justice went into a WIC clinic. WIC stands for Women, Infants, and Children. He went into a WIC clinic in Northern North Carolina, North Carolina, Greensboro, High Point, High Point, North Carolina. He went in there and he demanded information on mental health services they provide and reproductive health services they provide at a women, infants, and children clinic in North Carolina. He was told to leave by security. Then the administrator came out at some time, sometime later, it, it appeared to have gone on forever from the portions that audit the audit played on his video. I have not seen the blind justice video. Don't care to I'm auditing audit, the audits audit of the blind justice audit. I'm not auditing blind justice's audit. So it seemed to go on forever. The administrator came out, told him to leave. They appeared to argue for some period of time with uh, blind justice doing the the standard shtick yeah 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 i'm leaving i'm leaving right now i just want to know one more thing and that never works that's not a good tactic if you're if you're told to leave you should leave generally speaking if you're trespassed you should get out so one positive thing i will say about audit the audit is he does provide all of his links so that's great. And I really appreciate that. If you're going to make any sort of legal arguments, you really should provide the links that you use. So that's great. So, I mean, he's, you're starting off good, Mr. Audit the Audit. Now, here's some problems. One of these links is to a Court of Appeals of Idaho decision. Now, that's an Idaho state decision. It has absolutely no bearing, absolutely no bearing on whether or not North Carolina did anything wrong because they're looking at the Idaho code 18 dash 7011. So, so this is not applicable. Another case that he used, I didn't actually see this one in the video. I did see the uh, Idaho one, but this was provided as a link. So maybe I just missed it in his video. Uh, this is Wilson V state. This is a Texas state decision court of appeals of texas right and this is dealing with the texas penal code again absolutely nothing to do with north carolina so that's not very good uh this is sheets v city of punta gorda that he used this is a decent it's a it's just a district court decision but if he uses it if he uses it for the discussion the discussion portions of cases are pretty helpful. They'll walk you through the logic. They'll walk you through relevant case law. Had he just done the first amendment portions in the discussion of, of this decision, he probably would have fared a lot better because he would, he would have been able to see things like, um, this is probably a limited public forum because people can talk in there but they can't talk about whatever they want to talk about. So a limited public forum is not open to the public at large for discussion of any and all topics. And it can be set up to grant only selective access to the class for which it is reserved. Selective access to the class for which it is reserved. That would be women, infants, and children who are patients at the clinic. For that reason, regulating a limited public forum need not be content neutral. Instead, restrictions on a limited public forum need only be reasonable and viewpoint neutral. Reasonable and viewpoint neutral. That's all you had to do. And then it discusses reasonableness and viewpoint neutral. So you can you can get all of that from Sheets v. City of Punta Gorda, which is a, a fairly well-written district court decision. So there you go. Um He goes on to talk about the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. I don't know why he didn't actually link to the law. General public covered entities. Bro, general public. Uh, What's the HIPAA privacy rule? 
had he actually read the law, had he linked to the actual law, there's there's U.S. code and there are CFR regulations, Code of Federal Regulations, that cover HIPAA. But he would have seen that HIPAA places the burden on the healthcare provider to protect the information of the patient. The healthcare provider has a positive burden to protect the healthcare information of the patient. And there's no real restrictions on, on what the healthcare provider can or should do other than, you know, has to be within the law, I guess. But one of the things that they can do is they can definitely prevent you from filming inside because that might, that might compromise patient information. You, the, the filmer, the videographer won't get in trouble if that patient's information, their health, private health information gets disclosed, but the healthcare provider will. And so in order to protect themselves and their patient's personal healthcare information, they prevent filming. And you can, you can really tell because like in here, somewhere in here, he shows, he loves to do clip art. He loves to do all sorts of things. I'm sure he spends a lot of time writing his, uh, writing his scripts and getting all of his little, um, screenshots or clip art for this stuff. Um, but he's showing Sutter health here. This is a Sutter health thing. It, they're a private hospital, privately owned hospital. There's Sutter health's all over California. They won't allow you to film inside. Go ahead and try it someday. You'll get, you'll get asked to leave. And then if you don't leave, you'll get trespassed and they can do that. And Adderley v. Florida allows the government can do the same thing. So you don't have, you don't have any more right to film at a, at a WIC clinic operated by the health department of North Carolina. You don't have any more right to film there than you do at Sutter health. So there you go. So then he, uh, he goes on this. These are links about uh, trespass. This is where he got, here's his Wilson V state. And somewhere in here, there's the Idaho decision as well, I believe. Or maybe it's on a different, maybe it's on a different page, but or here you go. Here's Pentago V state. Idaho court of appeals. So <clears throat> this is a, this is a general discussion of, of trespass. It's a blog. It's not authoritative. I don't know why he linked to it. I'm, I'm sure that this guy, Jeff Welty, I'm sure he probably is an attorney. Maybe, maybe, may, I don't know. Um, he seems to have a, a reasonable grasp of things, but this is just a blog. I don't know why you'd link to it. And then we've got some, um, encyclopedia entries that this is where I got Perry education. Uh, no, no analysis of it. Um, and <laughs> you might, you might be thinking to yourself, well, Perry education dealt with a non-public form, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the court determined that this was a non-public form. Somewhere near probably said non-public form. School mail, mail facilities constituted a non-public form, right? But then you have sheets talking about a limited public form. Do, do, do. Here, the parties agree city hall is a limited public forum. So, I mean, I have no idea why he included all of this stuff. Uh, it wasn't a time, place, or manner restriction. It was a prohibition against against filming. Filming isn't necessarily speech. It isn't necessarily speech. Um, it's certainly, I don't know why he, he, he just posts, he just puts up random stuff. So anyway, so then finally we get on to the ADA stuff. I'm going to, just throw this one out. This is the actual North Carolina code for second degree trespass. And yes, he, a person commits the offense of a second degree trespass. If without authorization, he enters or remains on the premises of another. And yes, the state owns this particular property. Maybe it's a County. 
it might be a county facility, but it's certainly not his. And remaining on the premises of property that isn't his after he's been notified not to remain there by the owner, a person in charge of the premises by a lawful occupant or by another authorized person. The gal came out, the, she was the head of the building, came out and said, you got to leave. And he didn't leave. So yes, he most likely could get charged with and most likely could get convicted of second degree trespass. So we'll go on to the ADA stuff. So he provided this link, 29 USC 3002. I just want you to see that I'm not, I'm not fooling you on this stuff. 29 USC 3002. And he uses it, he comes down here to assistive technology device, and he says the term assistive technology device means any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially, modified, or customized, it is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. And therefore, Audit the Audits concludes that Mike's camera is assistive technology is an assistive technology device, and therefore, somehow, magically speaking, it's... It's allowed by the ADA. Well, here's the problem, kids. This is in labor. This is chapter 31 of labor. Look what it's talking about. State grants for assistive technology. State grants for protection and advocacy services related to assistive technology. The chapter 31 is titled Assistive Technology for Individuals with Disabilities. They're, they're talking about getting it. Authorization of appropriations. This is how states can get grants and things like that for assistive technology devices to help persons with disabilities be able to navigate around the world. <clears throat> now this is the actual equal opportunity for individuals with disabilities. This is the ADA Act. This is the public, uh, this is for public services. This is what discrimination would be Subject to the provisions of the subchapter, no qualified individual with a disability shall, and then this is important, by reason of such disability, be excluded from participation in or denied the benefits of the services, programs, or activities of a public entity, or be subjected to discrimination by any such entity. Now, he is being excluded from there because he's filming in a women, infants, and children clinic. He's not allowed to be there because he's not a woman, an infant, a child, or a patient of the clinic. Now, again, all ADA stuff has to be reasonable. They have to make reasonable accommodations. And Mike's um, excuse for filming is that he takes the video back to watch it with his wife. And she could explain what's going on there right? How does that, how does that help? Why doesn't he bring his wife with him? If he can see enough to film, then why does he need his wife? Hey, this thing you have on the screen right now, honey, this is when you were looking at a clock. Okay. How does he know where, where that clock is located in the video? How does he know where the, the that, that particular segment of the video where how does he know where that is in the video how can he correlate that to where he was in the building at that time or what direction his camera was pointed in it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense it's not a reasonable accommodation and if he needed to go into some place like a clinic where they are going to where they are going to protect the health information of their patients, he could bring his wife in with him next time. At least then he'd have a woman with him at the women, infants, and children clinic. Now, I, the audits goes on to give the initial security guard an F because he didn't identify himself. But from what I saw, I would give the security guard a D, a good solid D because he didn't get violent with Mike Oh, he touched his camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't get violent with Mike and he stayed there for freaking ever with him. At some point in the video, or at least in audit the audits video, this, this security guard was telling Mike, you know, we close in 10 minutes or something like that and you have to be out in 10 minutes. Very patient. 
As far as I'm concerned, very patient. I like seeing security guards not get violent. So I would give him a good solid D. As far as, I'm going to call her Karen. As far as Karen and uh, Captain Doherty, who is apparently a, uh, a peace officer. He's a, I think he's a police officer. I believe this company uses police officers as well as security guards because this guy does end up making an arrest. Um, but Karen, I would give her a good solid A. She comes out, she tells, she tells Mike, no, you can't film your trespass, leave. I would give Captain uh, Doherty, I would give him a good solid B because he came in and he still gave Blind Justice a thousand opportunities to leave. After the initial security guard had given Blind Justice an amazing amount of time to leave. So I would give him a good solid B. So we've got D, A, and B. Now, audit the audits give Mike an A minus. I don't know why. Mike was in the wrong place, asking the wrong things, trying to, trying to interrupt the health services of women, infants, and children who are already relegated to using county services. That means that they're poor and, and they may not be proud of it. They may not like having all their business displayed. It's a dick move by dick. So I would give Mike an F because Mike ended up getting trespassed out of there. I don't know if he actually caught the charge on it, but whatever. Now, apparently, apparently Mike then uh, says that I don't know why Audit the Audit uses this as some sort of a gospel truth. Um, this is this is something that apparently Mike put up. This he got he, he according to Mike he passed out and he woke up at the hospital or something like that. Uh, the scan came back and showed a small bleed on the brain. That sounds bad. A bleed on the brain sounds bad. That sounds like a stroke. They transported me to a bigger hospital that has a trauma unit and a bigger neurology department. They did their own scans and confirmed the brain bleed. You know, bleeding brains, I'm not a doctor. That sounds bad. That sounds bad to me. I'm not a doctor. I'm not making any medical diagnosis. I'm just saying a brain bleed sounds bad. They monitored me for several hours, then discharged me to my wife's care. Huh. Huh. They discharged me. So I'm guessing it wasn't a stroke. I don't know. I don't know what any of this means. And then Mike goes on to complain about, oh, now when in nursing, ever did anything to address the urine. And at no point do I remember at either hospital, anyone offered, offering any form of treatment or offer to assist with pain. Huh. Jesus, whiny little baby. So anyway, theoretically, there was a brain bleed, but it wasn't bad enough to actually do anything about. I don't know. And here's like, they didn't offer any form of treatment or offer to assist with pain. Uh, the only things that I know about like brain bleeds, like I, I think in the only way they're going to be able to actually treat that is with surgery. So I'm sure they did not offer you surgery and to assist with the pain, like from my understanding, and again, I'm not a doctor, but like aspirin and a lot of a lot of pain relievers will increase bleeding. That's that's my understanding of it. Um, so maybe maybe if you had a brain bleed, they weren't going to give you aspirin. I'm guessing. I'm just guessing. But again, I'm not a doctor. So anyway, as far as audit, the audits audit of Blind Justice's audit of the WIC facility. I'm going to give audit the audits audit an F. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.